What's up everybody, it's Matt from HowToMotorcycleRepair.com. Uh, in today's video we're going to be working on the CB550 motor and we're working on it for two issues. Issue number one is the head gasket is leaking oil. It's very common for these models to leak at the oil passage that runs up the sides of the cylinders. There's, a, there's an o-ring on the head gasket and it just gets dry and brittle over time and it leaks oil. Uh, next thing is this thing's been in storage for some time and I've actually seen this issue on other models that actually ran is that the compression test become, comes out low. So you get low compression, uh, you do a leak down test and either the intake or the exhaust valves are the culprit, they're leaking air. It's just leaking the compression, you don't get the values that you need. Um, and we're going to jump into that in a little bit here. So basically since the head's going to come off, um, it's a good idea to remove all the carbon, lap the valves or do a valve job, whatever's needed. This one just needs lapping. And since you have the head off, it's not that much more work to take the cylinder off and inspect the piston end, piston ring end gap and give the cylinders a quick hone and then you can also replace the base gasket. I mean you're, you're pretty much almost there you might as well just do the cylinder and if you're releasing the pressure off with the cylinder head then you may get a base gasket leak if you don't do that so it's just a good idea to do that across the board. Also on these models the cam chain tensioners tend to crack, get brittle so it's a good idea to inspect those and replace them if necessary. All right, so we're, what we're gonna do in this video is completely remove everything, lap the valves, hold the cylinders, reseal everything, and get the compression back up to where it needs to be and also get rid of all the leaks. And uh, therefore the owner can take this and slap it back in his frame and run it. All right, so this video is a sample on YouTube. If you want the full length video, click on the annotation link or in the video description that will redirect you and you can purchase the full length video which will be X amount of minutes long. I haven't edited it yet but I'm going to throw out how long it is right here in a note and it's in 1080p so the quality is pretty freaking good and basically I want to answer a few questions that I get on the videos that are available for purchase. Uh, first of all you get to stream it instantly after you make the purchase. It's similar to watching a YouTube video. Basically, you get emailed a link, you open it up, and you can watch it, and you can wrench right away. There's no DVD that I'm sending in the mail. You don't have to wait for anything. It's pretty much instantaneous. Also, the video is yours forever with unlimited views. A lot of people ask, well, how many times do I get to watch it? It's yours forever, dude. And if you don't like it, if something doesn't work out, this project isn't for you, it's always guaranteed or your money back. I mean, I don't want you to buy something that you're not comfortable with or it turns out it's something that you haven't envisioned. So if it doesn't help you, then we can refund your money. It's no big deal. All right, so what's nice about Gumroad that hosts these videos is you can watch it on any device, desktop, laptop, mobile device, tablet, mobile phone. There's even an app on Apple and Android, so you can just watch it wherever, whenever, on any device. Both credit card and pay PayPal payments are accepted. All right, guys. Before we get started, I want to talk about the service manual. You can, go to, you can go to my site and download the service manual for free. And also there's a parts diagram. See it's somewhere in here. So this is all the info I printed for this job here. These right here, these exploded diagrams are going to help you big time. There's a bunch of nuts, I'm sorry, a bunch of bolts up here and washers. And it's a pain to remember where everything goes. These are a useful tool. So definitely go to my site. Check those out. You can download them for free. All right, guys, I'm done talking. Let's do a compression test on this and then a leak down, and you can see why we're doing all this. And, of course, an oil leak is obvious, so we'll, we'll just skip that. Just assume that the head gasket's leaking. So that way you can see if, if your motor needs something like this, then, then this video is for you. All right, we're going to be rolling the motor over a lot in this video, so what you need to do is remove these two number three Phillips screws on this cover here and normally this bike comes with points but uh, this has been upgraded to a Dyna S uh, electronic ignition but anyway in this hole here um, there is several marks 
There'll be marks for the number one and four cylinder and the number two and three cylinder. There'll be F marks, which is fire and T. We're interested in T. T is for top dead center. And also there's another mark that is just slightly past top dead center for the um, number one and four cylinder for doing the cam tensioning. And we'll get to that later. But anyway, um, it exposes this nut, which is a uh, 24 millimeter. And always go in a clockwise rotation. And anytime you have the cam disconnected in this video, make sure you hold the chain up because otherwise it'll get all wrapped up on the bottom gear and it can bind. So you definitely want to go slow and just make sure you pull up on the chain as you roll it over and that way uh, you won't run into any issues. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be doing a compression test and then a leak down test on this CB550 motor in front of us here. So for the gauge, for the compression gauge, I use this Actron uh, compression tester and I forget the model number, but I'll definitely put a little note at the bottom of the video here and also a link in the video description and in my blog post on where you can purchase this. I bought it from Amazon for about 40 bucks and the reason I like this one so much is, first of all, a compression tester needs to have a Schrader valve right at the end here, meaning it, it won't add any volume to the cylinder head and therefore give you lower readings. I've seen some testers where they have this super long hose and they have the Schrader valve up by the gauge. So now all this volume here is added to your compression ratio uh, calculation and, and the, the readings are, are wrong. So you make sure you have the Schrader valve here. And then we're also going to use this for a leak down test. We're going to convert it to a leak down tester just by removing the Schrader valve. Uh, secondly, if you work on a lot of motorcycles, you're going to find that you're going to need different adapters. Um, typically, they come with a 14 mil adapter standard, but this one comes with a, a extended 14, a 12, and a 10. So we're going to need the 12 millimeter adapter for this model. And then it comes with extra parts, O-rings. and So what I like to do is just put a little WD-40 on my O-rings because it makes them last longer. I've had this for years now and I've never had to change the O-rings. Alright, so a couple things about this motor. Uh, it's been sitting for 10 years, hopefully indoors. There's no carburetors on here. So we're going to get maximum airflow into the engine during the compression test. If you have the carbs mounted on the bike, you're going to want to hold the throttle wide open because that'll let air in. If you don't, the throttle blades or the slides are closed, air doesn't enter, and you're going to get lower readings. Also, you're going to want to perform this hot. There's no way I can do that because this motor hasn't ran in 10 years. It needs a bunch of work, and actually, it needs a head gasket, and we're going to be... I'm going to do another video on a, a complete top end regasketing video, um, which will be helpful if you're rebuilding the top end. But really, what's really common on these CB550s is the, <clears throat> the O-ring passages on the ends here uh, get dry, brit only start to leak. And what we're going to find is a low compression, and we're going to find leaky valves here. So that's very common on these models, and uh, that's just something that needs to be addressed. All right, so we're going to start off with the cold compression test and we're also going to start off with a dry test. We're going to add a little oil after the first test to see if things improve. Okay, so I'm going to do the number two cylinder because I think that was the worst one. So what I'm going to do is just screw in my tester here pretty tight. Now I'm only going to do one cylinder for purposes of this video, but you're going to want to repeat it to all of them and you're going to want to take notes so you know um, you know which one's which and, it, and the cylinders are always numbered one through four left to right as you're sitting on the bike the left cylinder is number one then two three and four all right let's crank it up all right we're showing 95 psi that's horrible um this bike should have 170 PSI per the manual. 
All right, so great. We got a compression reading. We got 95 PSI. Now what? That doesn't tell us much. Um, it tells us there's a problem, but it doesn't tell us where the problem lies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squirt a little oil in the cylinder, and what that's going to do is provide a temporary seal on the piston rings. If you get higher readings during the wet test, then you can conclude that the piston rings are leaking and they need attention. If you get the same results, then you can conclude that the valves are the culprit. Okay, so just put a, a couple squirts down there. I had to prime that. I didn't pump a whole bunch in there. You probably want to put like a, a teaspoon or less in there. We have a slightly higher reading of 105. So that tells us that, you know, a little bit's leaking past the rings as well. And considering it's been sitting for 10 years, um, you know, we probably have issues across the board on this thing. So it didn't jump up to 170. I don't think it ever will, but uh, so we have some issues to further diagnose. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do for a leak down test is remove this Schrader valve. I have this little valve core tool. It's just a tire Schrader valve tool. What I'm gonna do is just remove it. So now this, this just allows full air to, to bypass. All right, I have another video on how to build a DIY leak tester. But let me just quickly explain. But you're definitely going to want to check out that video because this is super easy to build. So I have a pressure regulator. Air comes in. I can regulate this down. This is the only custom piece, really. This I filled with epoxy about, you know, this is just a two, three inch long nipple. You cap it, you plug it with epoxy, half inch, quarter inch, whatever. Then you put a, you drill a hole in it, a number 60 drill bit. It's a 40 thou orifice. And that is just some kind of restriction that is good up to a thousand cubic inches or something like that. I can link to the Wikipedia link. You can read more about it. So that's only, the only real magical thing about this. And then here's a T with a gauge. So I have my air. I made a couple modifications to this too. I used to hook this on here, okay, and run it at 100 PSI. The problem with shooting 100 PSI in your engine is sometimes it will roll it over. And if you're working alone like myself, it's hard to hold the engine at top dead center, especially on single piston engines. Um, it'll want to roll over on you. So what I did is I bought a lower pressure gauge. I think I bought this in the plumbing department at Home Depot. It's 0 to 30 PSI. And currently I'm going to set this to 20. It really, or it just jumped up to 22. But what you want is you want to set pressure, whatever it is, the engine's going to leak some, and then you just do math. 100 PSI makes it super easy math. If you have 100 PSI starting, you pump air in and you get 90. 100 minus 90 is 10, divided by 100 is 10% leakage. You're just going to have to plug and chug different numbers. <clears throat> so my incoming air pressure is 40 PSI. You want it slightly higher than your set pressure. Okay, so now what we're going to do is pop this guy back in here and it's going to allow full air to just enter. Okay, obviously the, the exhaust is off, the carbs are off, so any air leaking um, out the exhaust or the intake can be easily noted, but um, if you have the exhaust on, the carbs on, and also you're going to want to open the oil filler cap or some other 
area that is has access to your crankcase because that's where the oil the air can go. Well, let's talk about that for a second. The air, okay, at top dead center, both your valves are closed. You have the head gasket sealing the combustion chamber, and um, the air technically can't escape. So you got your intake valve, your exhaust valve, your head gasket, and then you have the piston rings. So air can go down into the crankcase, out the intake, out the exhaust, or out the head gasket. Now, this head gasket needs to be replaced no matter what, but what you would probably want to do is also get some soapy water and spray it around here to see if you have a head gasket leak. All right, so let's go ahead and hook this up. I haven't put the motor at TDC yet. I'll do that while it's leaking. Okay, so you can hear a leak, but we don't know if it's at top dead center or anything. So I'm just gonna roll the motor over till I get top dead center. I'm coming up to top dead center here. And what's nice about this low pressure, it does not roll the motor over. All right, so I'm at top dead center and you can hear a nice leak. And if you look at the pressure gauge, it's at 12. So we were at 22, now we're at 12. Let's see where the air is coming from. See, I put my finger in the exhaust and you can just hear it. So we have an exhaust valve leak. Let's do some quick math here and see what leakage it is. So we got 22 minus 12 equals 10 divided by 22. We have 45% leakage. Okay, you're going to get 0.45 as the number. Let's just see if 22 minus 12, right? Divided, it's 10. Divided by 22 is 45 times 100 to convert to percent. And we got 45 and a half percent leakage. That's horrible. You don't want any more than 20. 5% leakage is an engine in excellent health, 10 is normal, and then as it wears you want to go up to 20% and then it's deemed you need to rebuild or you got to do something. Alright, so now we have this leak. Um, let's see, what's really common on these models is, um, is carbon builds up on the valves. So what we can do here, I don't know if this is going to help or not, I don't know if it's too far gone or not, but what you can do is you can put a piece of wood right on the valve and just give it a, some light blows to see if it's carbon related and if it'll just knock it loose. And you just want to give it a couple light taps. And all of a sudden our number jumped up to 15. So we went from 12 to 15. So that's good news because now it tells me that it's, it is just junk. And also this valve is loose. Hear that? So that tells me there's valve lash, meaning this cam is not holding the valve open. I probably should have done that first before beating on it, but let's see if we can improve on the numbers a little more. You don't want to go crazy because the piston's at top dead center. All right, so slightly improving, 16. Let's just do the math and see where we end up. Okay, so it's uh, 22 minus 16 is 6 divided by 22. And now we're at 27%. So I can probably keep doing that and get it better. Or I, I would even be okay with maybe reassembling the motor and running some seafoam through it. I mean, if you don't want to take this all apart. I have to take this apart because the head gasket is, is shot. So the head's going to be off. I might as well take apart the valves, sew to blast everything, and uh, install new valve guide seals and whatnot. Um, but you can see how I just almost made this motor um, usable again just by tapping that with a hammer. Alright guys, so we're done 
reassembling the motor. We regasketed everything, um, honed the cylinder, all new gaskets, lapped the valves, decarbonized everything, and we're going to redo a compression check. Now I've got 117 PSI on the um, test prior to even touching this motor on the number one cylinder. Got 97 on number two, 140 and 140. Now this engine is cold. The rings need to seat into the uh, new crosshatch and all that good stuff, but uh, let's just see what we get on the bench. All right, number one has 150, excellent. Now 150 to 170 is what the service manual calls for is normal. So that's, that's good. All right, this was the worst cylinder and we're at 160. So that's awesome. Huge improvement there. Okay, 160, 165 on that one. And guys, during this test, I do squirt a little oil in the cylinders. I mean, they're kind of bone dry, if you will, because it's a fresh motor. So, I mean, you know, other than assembly lube, you gotta, you gotta add a little more, otherwise, I'm talking dry cylinder walls, there's nothing to seal. We got 170 on that one. So all in all, everything increased. It's where it should be. Again, the motor's cold. It's not broken in, if you will. So, I mean, but it's a huge improvement over the numbers we had. So we had 117 on number one. We went to 150. Uh, 97 on number two, which was horrible. Got up to 160. 140 on number three and four, and they went to 161. 70 respectively and you know I did squirt a little oil in there and uh, it's not broken in and it's not hot but uh, it shows us that it did um, increase so that's good all right so we're gonna do the leak down test again starting is roughly 22 psi let's just make sure I have this at TDC It's a top dead center. I hear very little leakage. Again, we were at 22 and now we are at 21. So let's do that math. One divided by 22 times 100. We're at four and a half percent leakage. We were at 30%. Now we're at excellent numbers here. So all it takes is uh, a little bit of work, regassing the motor, lapping, honing, and uh, you got yourself a usable motor here. This thing's done. Screw's full of oil, so maybe that's why it's like that. No washer under that one, and it's a short one. And notice I'm not paying attention to the length. Um, that's because usually they're all by all by design. See that? You have about three eighths of an inch of engagement. So what I do is I just drop them all in. They all stick out the same, and I can quickly identify which screw goes where. And also the parts manual, also the service manual or the parts manual has the length specified for where and what screw goes where. So that's that's pretty easy. So I kind of just don't worry about it at this point.
Let's loosen all the 10 mil bolts here. more 10 mil under here. Okay, there's a number three screw right here. It's just a little cover. It has two O-rings on here. Same with this side, number three. Note the O-rings. Okay, and a couple more 10 mils under those covers. Okay. 